I still had no clue where I was, but I was enjoying the time spent here. Everything reminded me of things I had read about in school history books from the buildings to the people. Yes, I remember reading many a time about uh, fox spirits in uh, my history classes. Look cynically. I looked at the nearby girls and let out a sigh. The history books never said anything about fox girls or spirits. Everything reminded me, everything reminded me of things I had read in school history books. The history books never said anything about fox girls or spirits. <sighs> there were mentions of them in various religious texts, but they weren't real. Oh, now you choose to question it. So, you're sure this wedding sash will be able to get back months to my world? Nope! In the end, Mike had been able to research the spell even further. Have have made huge progress after the last few days. Oh, it's painful. <laughs> Why did she research it? Does she have the fucking Hitchhiker's book? Like, what's it? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy book in her hand. Like, there's no way... Siri was able to provide some details. She believes that the spell within will return somewhere to where it belongs. I suppose it's worth her a try. Well, it's good that she's given that fucking spell up. Like, she could have told me earlier when I was there. Uh, it will work. I know it will. I just need some time to prepare. I'm not sure I should be grateful or worried. Still, I don't think you'd be able to figure it out so fast, Dave. Yep, magic is super easy. Just a wave and a flash and it's done. Except the time it will take you to prepare the ingredients. Do not underestimate the arcane arts. Dave, you have a gift. Make sure you treat it with the respect it deserves. A wave and a flash. Um, I'm not going to end up exploding into fireworks or something, right? I'm not going to end up by, you know, that evil Diagon Alley that Harry Potter ended up in in the first or second film. I don't remember. Absolutely. Probably not. I guarantee it. Don't worry, Dave. I won't do anything that will hurt you, I hope. Oh, truly, your confidence fills me with vigor. Unless you happen to be made of clay, glass, wood, or stone. These all seem to shatter when you try to cast a spell on them. Yes, well, I'm not made of clay, glass, wood, or stone, so I should be fine. Also, how'd you... Is it just the English sort? Is it like a southern thing that pronounces glass as glass as opposed to glass? Is that just an English thing or does like Americans do that as well? Do Eastern Europeans do that? I th I'm not sure whether it's just the South of England thing. Oh no, it's glass, darling. You know, that kind of thing. Dave, you didn't have to tell them that. Tell him that. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, I feel so glad that you're quite obviously hiding secrets from me, I must say. Yes, quite. Oh boy, good thing the human body is mostly made up of water. Let's take a break. I'm feeling a bit distracted by the younger girl's excitement. I didn't notice this sweat had started forming on my forehead as some dizziness coming over me. Without a warning, I collapsed to the ground, my breathing heavy and ragged. As my fish invaded, the girls ran towards me, shouting my name in concern. Still, happy music, which is completely out of place and has no right to be here. It is disgusting, this game. I can't believe that they're selling this for $10. See, let's get on with it, shall we? Oh, wow, we're back here. Oh, and the problem is it's gone back. I slowly regained consciousness, opening my eyes to take in the familiar surroundings of the room. I had a pocket... Occupied. I had occupied during my stay within this unfamiliar world. I was surprised to find the two fox spirits in the room with me, f seemingly in the middle of preparing something. Dave, it is good to see you awake again. You were unconscious for quite some time. How are you feeling? No running to my side, cliche, going, <gasps> Dave, I can't believe you do this to us. Nothing like that. Just, it is good to see you awake again. We were rather worried. How are you? <laughs> A bit tired, but I'm okay. What happened? You sprung quite a high fever. I have prepared some food for you. It will be ready soon. Dave is preparing the spell that will improve, improve your condition. Oh, goody gumdrops. I think you have a cold. You are so hot and sweaty. Well, I had to get you out of your clothes to wash them. Mmm. 
I think I'll see where we're going with this. My head still felt a little fuzzy from the rest, but I was probably just exhausted from the constant training. I guess even a hero gets sick sometimes, you're not a hero. It took me a moment to realise what Machiko had said, raising the blanket I found myself in nothing but a pair of shorts, I instantly blushed. At this point it should be normal. Why would you take my clothes, she just said. Being near naked in the presence of someone as pretty as Machiko, I kept the blanket close enough to, to be a second layer of skin. That's how normal people react as well. Generally speaking, when I'm in bed and my girlfriend's outside of bed, I do keep the covers as close to my body as possible. I'm like, no, 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 we're not having sex. What do you think I am? This is disgusting. This is what Takahiro is thinking now. No, it's stupid, isn't it? I'm almost ready, Dave. <sighs> At least she's not naked. That's the only thing I can say about this. Machiko suddenly slipped past me, startling me in the presses as her hands gently grasped my shoulders, pulling me against her. None of your robes fit you. This is the best we could do. I need you to relax. Easier said than done. Who would be able to relax with a girl hugging them? The lack of clothes only made me more nervous. Who would be able to relax with a girl hugging them? I'm sure all smiters can point out an instance where this has happened. Just lean back against me and watch. Dave is about to give you a demonstration of her powers. It would be rude not to pay attention. And I would hate to have to punish you for being rude. A Monty Python, the Holy Grail again, isn't it? And after that, the royal spanking! <gasps> Christ. As those words were whispered into my ear like the temptations of a succubus, I keep my eyes on the younger sibling. The sight of the young fox spirit, seemingly in the middle of preparing some sort of ritualistic spell, caused me to momentarily forget about my embarrassment. Momentarily. Uh, don't be alarmed if you feel any unusual sensations. Ooh, uh. Once the spell takes hold, Ooh, uh. it usually takes a few moments to flow through you. Ooh, uh. Feel free to grab hold of me if you need to. I'm not even saying ooh uh, to that. Despite my attempt to protest, I decided it was best to not worry too much about it. It wasn't like she was going to blow me up or anything. Ooh, uh. I'm just pointing out how many innuendos there are in this. It's silly. As though in a daze, I watched a small glowing orb started to gather in the room, urged on by the soft whispers of the young fox spirit who had finally started her spell. Maybe I should accept Michiko's invitation before something blew up in my face. <laughs> Not going there. And who are? Okay, so Kamehameha. I mean, what's that? <laughs> and from one picture to the next colouring in. <sighs> As I watched, the girl began swelling her arms around. Tiny balls of light like fireflies began to appear in the vortex of her swelling hand spinning around her. Okay, so hang on a second. Tiny balls of light like fireflies began to... That's tiny balls of light. It's a sentence too late. Well, two sentences too late. The light had a warm feeling to it. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. The light had a warm feeling to it. <gasps> As I've said before, fetch this man a magnifying glass, for we have a new Sherlock here. Jesus. But still more intense than the candle or a light bulb, finally she began to move her whole body, a dance of sorts that made the light flare even brighter. It makes me so jealous seeing her like this, not of her power, but her beauty. In this moment, she is the most beautiful creature in the world. I won't disagree with you with that. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to mention it. But would you choose her over me? Which do you like better, maturity or youthful vigor? Or perhaps a stern Dave is more your type, or are you? I could tell she was poking fun at me, despite my current state. I was about to offer a reply in return when I felt a tingle at the side of me. Like, yes, this is the time to make fun. It felt familiar to the sensation of swallowing fizzy candy only throughout my entire body. Oh, this feels weird. And it's done, and he didn't even explode. Yay! Wait, what? Tell me, do you feel any better, Dave? I feel a bit weird, like my entire body is tingling. I really hope I won't explode. 
die. If you were going to explode, you would have done it by now. You'll be able to you'll be super fine in no time at all. Dinner, dinner! So they were fine with the possibility of me maybe exploding. I... It... <sighs> Almost as soon as she finished her spell, Mako clutched her head in her hands and fell to her knees. Michiko seemed as startled as myself by Mako's sudden display of pain. Yeah, like this has never happened before, Mako casting a spell and then being painful or having a headache afterwards? What, what, what? As I tried to get back onto my feet, Michiko rushed to her side. Mako, you need to show more restraint. Please lie down, Dave. Can you keep an eye on her? I'm going to prepare something that will help her. Yeah, I'll just sit here and care after the dying person next to me. Of course. Come, Dave. You should lie down over here. Finally regaining my footing, I made my way over to Mako's side. After making sure her sister was left in good hands, Mako left the room, leaving me alone with the groaning girl who had been struck by a nasty headache after casting the spell. But yes, there was a prize, because again, this has never happened before, has it? Oh, Dave, Dave. Don't worry, Dave. I'm sure your sister will be back soon. Try to relax a bit until then. Dave, do you like Dave? Well, I mean, I'm not gay, but now you put it like that. Well, where did that question come from? Dave asked, but you never answered. I don't mind, you know, if you like Dave over me. I'd sure like it if you liked me, though. Um, how do I explain this? I paused briefly, trying to think of a good way to respond, but I finally decided to play it safe. I raised a hand and gently patted the girl's head, offering a warm smile. I like you both. What a shit answer. Just like I like Dave and Dave, you're all friends I've managed to make in this new world. No silly, of course you like us all, but who do you, you know, like like? Dave was asking about your type, and I know what that means. Oh, you mean it like that? Oh, innocent little day. Well, I, I say David, I can call him Takahiro now. And it's a little Takahiro who's only suddenly come towards the feeling of what she meant. To be honest, I've been focusing so much on my judo. No one's going to believe you. I haven't really thought about it. How about I make you and your sister a promise? A promise? Yeah, a promise. I'm not really ready to answer a question like that, judo, who's always been good. It's why I need to get back to my world to win that match. It's been my dream since I was a kid and real men don't give up on their dreams. So hang on a second. You've gone to a different dimension which you've already accepted. Spirits are flying around. Magic's flying around. And you're like, oh no, hang on a second. I need to get back because I need to do a fucking unimportant stupid little dudo match and then fucking come back here zooming back. you twat Ugh. if i went to spirit from final fantasy 10 the first thing i asked wouldn't be oh how do i get back this magic is so mundane Ugh. twat but I'll promise you that after my match i'll do everything i can for a return to this world this time as a man who will be able to answer your question and it wasn't the spirit, apparently, who, who um, brought us into this world. It was the shrine. Yes, the shrine has a mind of its own. It's like the TARDIS, apparently. So now I'll have a reason to come back here, because a real man always keeps his promise. LIES! That makes me happy. As we sat there for a while, I suddenly heard strange shuffling around. Mako apparently heard it as well, squeaking as she toppled back into her rear. <sighs> I fell again. I guess I'm not all better yet. You shouldn't be able to move around too much, Dave. You're probably tired from after that thing you just did right now. I'm fine. Her tail twitched about eagerly behind her, hiking up her skirt up high enough to be relieving. Relieving. Revealing. <sighs> Are you now? You seem to be fidgeting a lot for some reason. Oh, you're seeing things. I'm fine. Amused by her behaviour, I watched on as she curled her hands and twitched her ears, using a voice that didn't sound quite like her. In the back of my head, I found myself thinking that she looked very much like, well, a cat. Is it normal for a fox to act like a cat? I could have sworn you looked ready to pounce a mouse any second just now. Now, magic makes me do weird things sometimes. One time, Dave had to get a ladder because I climbed a tree and was building a nest. What? Uh, huh? Mate, you're a fox or a cat? 
You have caught up a tree building it. Okay then! Awesome!